Good morning, church. It is a pleasure to be here this morning. Uh, last Saturday, I, uh, I flew to go to Trinidad to Last Saturday, I flew to Trinidad to go to, uh, to attend the funeral, of, the funeral of my father-in-law. He passed away. It was a very sad experience. It reminds us that we need to be ready. He was planning to be with us in June. But he will never come because death has taken him away from us. My brothers and sisters, you don't know the time, not the hour, when you'll be called. So be ready and be prepared. Each moment, each hour. Thank you, Oscar, for the Bible story. And thank you for this beautiful song. What a wonderful Savior. We need to be ready to bait him. Let's pray. Almighty God, we come before you this morning. Say thank you for our life. For the forgiveness of our sins. You are my today sharing the word with your people. May you use me as an instrument. Speak through me, O Lord. But most of all, erase my sins and my iniquities. Take full control of my thought, of my heart. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I want to thank God because while we were on our way to the church, I would say 25 minutes, Bev was driving, and suddenly a car just stopped. I must stop in front of her. And I just see the hands of God. God sent the angels to prevent a major accident to happen this morning. And I want to give him praise. He wanted us to be here. Because five of us, five of us in the car, and I, I saw Bev swerving from left to right. And when he turned to the left, to the right, and without checking what happened, I know it was God's hand. And to him be the glory, honor, and power. This morning, the title of, his, of the sermon is, Who are the true Israelites? My friends, uh, God has chosen Israel for a purpose to represent him among all the nations. And God has set up some requirements. A requirement is mandatory. It's defined as to comply with, to satisfy, to meet. And this life and this world almost everything asks for requirements. If you are going to buy a program, a software for your computer, they will ask you for requirements. If you have to complete a degree, you have to satisfy the requirement.
games as requirements. So, God also has a requirement for his people. This morning, we're going to see to discuss exactly who is really a true Israelite. And then look at God's requirement for his people. And thirdly, a response. According to the Bible, all who are in Christ, both Jew and Gentile, constitute the Israel of God. Jesus had broken the middle wall of partition. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. So who is a true Israelite? Is it somebody who is born in Israel? Is it somebody, the mother is a Jew and the father is a Jew? And the Talmudic tract, Perk Abbott, sayings of the fathers, it is stated, all Israel, meaning all who are Jews by birth, shall have a part in the world to come. It is stated and this tract that all who are Jews by birth shall have a part in the world to come. But this morning, my friends, I want to tell you that according to the word of God, being a Jew does not make one an Israelite. Let's read together in Romans chapter 9, verses 6, 7. Romans chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. They are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be be called Let us go to Romans chapter 2, verses 28, 29. Romans chapter 2, verses 28, 29. Are you there? For he is not a Jew, which is... Are you with me? He is not a Jew which is one or outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But who is a Jew, my brothers and sisters, today? Which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. This morning, my brothers and sisters, 
Are you a, a Jew? Are you an Israelite this morning? My friends, God, people come from all background, from all ethnic group. It does not matter if your mom were from Africa, from Germany, from everywhere, from Europe. But your heart is in Jesus. Then you are an Israelite. Then you are God's people. This morning, my brothers and sisters, if you are God's people, then God's requirement is for you and me. Amen? If you are an Israelite, if you have Abraham's seed, these requirements are for you. It would be an awful thing, my brothers and sisters, to say that those requirements were for the Israel, the old people in the Bible and the Old Testament. It will be a big mistake for you. I want to invite you to read with me in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Verses 12 and 13. Are you there? Amen. Now, Israel, what doth the Lord, let's read together, what the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Amen. This is for us this morning, my brothers and sisters. To fear the Lord our God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Verse 13, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. To fear God, my friends, is to regard him as with a profound respect. To come to God with the right attitude. We're not talking about a fear that prevents us to serve him. A fear that causes us not to function. To fear God is to honor Him. Honor Him with our heart, our attitudes, with our possession. How much do we fear God? Our attitude will tell us how much we fear God. This morning, fear God is to revere God. We seem to lose that fear that we cannot have reverence for God. How much reverence do we have, my brothers and sisters, when we come into his presence? I think we, are lo we, we have lost this connection. You know, it's happened to me because I've been, uh, uh, I, have a, I have a computer and the mouse, the mouse is 
is uh, remotely connected to the computer. But whenever the battery is dead, there is a message that's told, that tells me that it cannot work anymore. No connection. So the battery, the, the mouse, lose connection. My friends, when we cannot revere God, when we have no fear for God, we cannot function properly. And then the result is when we come to church, we cannot revere God. We lost all of our functions. We cannot produce any good things except for the fruits of sins and perdition. Fearing God prevent us from sinning and protect us from sin. Let's read together in Exodus chapter 20, verse 20. Exodus chapter 20. For God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces that you see not. So when we have the fear of God, it protects us from sinning. And the moment we lose that fear, we are living into sin. It is not all lost for you, my friends, because we can also learn to fear God. The fear of the Lord adds life. And Proverbs 10, verse 27. Oh, my friends, when we fear God, we, when we come to the house of God, we fear Him. When we come to God's house, we come on time. This is fearing God because the angels are there waiting for us. When we fear God, when we come to God's house, we don't speak with our friends. We can find time to discuss the things of the weak. When we fear God and our prayer should not have vain repetitions with his name for his name is holy. Fearing God we show respect for his word. We don't mistreat this book the word of God for God speak to his word. So often we have a Bible and the Bible is under everything. Stone come on up over the Bibles, other books come on, of the, on top of the Bible. As we fear God, the way we dress when we come to church, tell us if we fear God. We can speak about reverence but if we don't have the right attitude my brothers and sisters we are producing the fruits of perdition and Jesus is willing is willing to teach us his fear how to fear God I want to invite you to read with me Exodus chapter 31 Verses 12, 13. Exodus chapter 31, verses 12 and 13.
think this is the wrong verse. And here we'll read it. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. So not only, my friends, and Deuteronomy 10, verse 12, 13, we are asked one requirement. It's not only to fear God, but also to walk in all his ways. So find that we want to walk and choose to walk our own ways. Our prayer shall be, have thy own way. We sing that song so often, have thy own way, O Lord. In order for us to walk on his ways, we have to spend time with him. So we can have the power through the Holy Spirit. In our own, we cannot walk on his ways. I want to invite you to read with me in the book of Genesis chapter 5, verses 22 to 24. There was somebody who walked with God. Let's see what happened. Genesis chapter 5, verses 22 to 24. Are you there? Enoch walk with God after he begat Methuselah. How many years? Three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred and sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Amen? Oh my friends, you can walk with God too. It is no secret that we know that Jesus is walking with us from sunrise to sunset. When we know that we are walking with Jesus, it makes a difference in our life. When we walk in His ways, we live in His presence. We know He's there with us. Our attitude change. Our thought is different. We don't think like the others think because we are with Jesus. We are following his ways. Our conversation is different because we are walking in his ways. Our conversation in our home, in our car, with our friends, all that change because we are walking in just ways. Walking with God, walking in all his ways is to yield our members, servant to righteousness and to holiness. It is the pursuit of a perfect character. Let's read Romans chapter 6 verses 17, 18, 22. Romans chapter 6, verses 17. God be thanked that you were the servant of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you become the servant of righteousness. And verse 22. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life.
It is a way of holiness when we walk in his way. Jesus called us to live in righteousness. What is it then? I want to invite you to read with me Second King. Second Kings chapter 10, verse 31. Second Kings chapter 10, verses, verse 31. Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. Not walking in the way of God is to turn away from walking, from being obedient to the law of God. My friends, this morning, Jesus wants us to learn to walk in his ways. The law of God expresses his character. The law of God expresses his love. And when we don't take time to learn to be obedient, so we transgress his law. So we turn away and not walking with him. Some of us choose our own ways. Some of us choose to walk on the way of the world. You have two choices to do today, my friends. You can choose to walk on God's way or choose your own way. Then you turn away from God's law. As they say, monkey see, monkey do. When, we, when, you, when you walk according to the, to the world, you walk according to the laws of the world. Blessed is the, one, the man who walk not and the counsel of ungodly, of the wicked. Oh, my friends, there is a blessing for an Israelite, a true Israelite. For not to walk and the counsel of the wicked or the ungodly. The world offers us so much loss today. Everywhere you go, in the books, and the TV shows, everything around us, God's people need to learn. To walk in God's way. And you can do that by spending time in the words of God and asking God for His Holy Spirit to empower you to walk on His way. Because, my friends, you cannot do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. To be able to walk in God's way, you have to be on your knees. Because the enemy is like a lion roaring and shrouding you, seeking to devour you. You will be tempted from left to right, right to left and center. And the only way, the only way we can do it is to ask God to empower you with his Holy Spirit. Today, 
let us together decide that we want to walk in God's way. Jesus walked on the way of his Father. If Jesus did it, then he can empower us to do it. Amen? The next requirement is to love God. To fear, the first one, to fear God, to walk on all his way, and to love God. I put it together, love God, because the other requirement is to keep his commandments. Or my friends, to love God is to keep his... We cannot love God. We cannot say that we love God and not to keep his commandments. I've been places to hear that you don't need to keep God's commandments. But my friends, God's commandments reveal his character. That is character. And the commitments, he has established them. To love God, my friends, is not to yield self to temptation. As I said, the world is before us. Offering us the lust, the covetousness, and everything else. If we say that we love God, we have. We have to keep his commandments. In Genesis chapter 39, verse 9. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? How can I do it? This is the, 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 what the Christians should have all the time. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God when the world come with his temptation what should be our answer how can I do this great wickedness and sin against my God my friends the enemy is right there right now while I'm talking to you he's whispering whispering to you right now and in the moment we should offer that prayer how can i great, do this great wickedness and sin against my god he's studying you he know your weaknesses he know he look at you he may not be able to read your thoughts he cannot read your, your thought but your action whatever influence you he look at it Whatever that comes to your way, the way you react is study you or you react to it. If drugs is, 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 is your passion, it will study you. If lying is your passion, it will study you. If the food is your weakness, it's studying you. Whatever is your weakness, the enemy is right there trying to see how oh, I'm going to get him, how oh, I'm going to get her. Then he will bring it to you. Oh, I pray this morning, each one of us will say, How, oh, how oh, can I do this great wickedness and sin against my God? Do you love God? If you love God, keep my commandments. John chapter 15 verse 10. Let's read together. John chapter 15 verse 10. Are you there? If you keep my commandments you shall abide in my love even as i have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love amen 
if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. There is no other way to abide in God's love but to keep his commandments. In fact, somewhere in Second John, first John or Second John said, If you said you love me and you don't keep my commandments, you are what? A liar. And we know no liars will get in the kingdom of God. People will say that the commandments are no longer a need. So therefore, you don't need to keep it. It's a bunch of liars. Any Christians will say that you don't need to keep God's commandment. They are liars. Because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And if you said you love me, if you don't keep my commandments, you are a liar. Oh, it's time for Christians today to show their love to God. And to keep God's commandment. Oh, my friends, and Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, 14. Let's read together. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. What is that requirement said? This is support, this requirement of keeping God's commitment. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, 14. Ecclesiastes. What does it say? What is it? It is? It is the duty, the whole duty of? Of man. Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13, 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole mother. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man amen this is my duty this is your duty to fear God and to keep his commandments it is the basis of God's character when we keep God's commandments we show that we show that we love him You see, my friends, when we say that we love our husbands and our wives, all we do show it. We do things to please them. We want them to make to make you want to make them happy. And God, that's what we should be to, to, to show our love to God. We should do things that please Him. But my friends, I want to tell you this morning that it is impossible for the uncircumcised heart to love God and to love his neighbor. Because the, the commandment said to love God and to love your brother. It is impossible for the uncircumcised heart to love your brother or sister if you don't love God. That's why in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 4, it said that circumcise your heart. And Jeremiah 6, verse 10 said, circumcise your ear. Because if your heart is not circumcised, how can you love God? If your ear is not circumcised, how can you hear God's word? How can you hear his voice? This morning, my, my, my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that my prayer for you is for us. To learn to circumcise. Ask God to circumcise your heart. Circumcise your ear. Because we need to love God and we need to learn to love our brothers, our neighbors, and sisters. Somebody can say, Oh, I love God with all my heart. But I have problem to love my brothers and sisters. You don't love God yet. We need to learn to love our brothers and sisters. For love is a fulfilling of the law. Let's read together Micah 
chapter 6, verse 8. Micah. Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. Micah chapter 6 verse 8 Are you there? Amen. Amen He had showed thee O man what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God Amen? This is what to do. So when we show that, when we love God, when we love God, we will not have other gods before God. Amen? When we love God, we will not take his name in vain. Amen? When we love God, our conversation will be holy. When we love God, we will keep the Sabbath so keeping the commandments, you have to love God. But also in keeping the commandments, you show your love to your neighbor. Amen? That's me. you will honor your parents. You will not kill. You will not lie. No covetousness. Oh, my friends, this is the law of God. And I'm praying this morning that God will put his love in our heart so we can love him also we can love others and for the church to be triumphant we will have to love even those who don't love us amen i repeat for the church of god to be triumphant we we need to love those who don't care for us those who hate us it is impossible for us to be saved my brothers and sisters We can repeat John 3.16 all the time. For God so loved the world. We can repeat it every day. But if you don't love your brothers and sisters, I'm sorry for you. And this letter, 7, 7 1889, it is said that the reason why the Holy Spirit does not work among us is the unbelief in God and the lack of confidence in one another have mercy this was the work of the power of darkness to lead us to suspect our brethren and send apart as criticizers have mercy the church is looking for the spirit. The church is searching ways, looking for ways to, to bring people to the church, to bring people to the kingdom of God. But nothing is working. Why nothing is working? Because we have no love for our brothers. We have no love for our sisters. We condemn. We criticize. It's time for us to stop it. If we want to receive the Holy Spirit. See the enemy? That is job to create confusion. The enemy that is job. To bring the spirit of condemnation, of judgment, of criticism in his church. I want to invite you to read with me. Now, I'll read this, this uh, quote, uh, a few quotes from this book, Councils for the Church, page 174, chapter 33, Criticism and its Effects. Christians should be careful in regard to the words. They should never carry unfavorable reports from one of the friends to one another. Especially if they are aware that there is a lack of union between them 
have mercy. We should not carry words from one border to another border. No report, unfavorable report, telling that border, that sister, this border is this and that, this sister is this and that. It's time for us to stop that. It is cruel, cruel, cruel to hate and insinuate as though we knew a great deal and we got to his friends. When we listen to a reproach against our brother, we take up that reproach to the question, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? And the psalmist answered, He that walk uprightly and work righteousness and speak it the truth in his heart. Oh, my brothers and sisters, don't lie about your brothers and sisters. Nor do evil, evil to his neighbor. Nor take up a reproach against his neighbor. What a world of gossip will be prevented. I repeat, what a world of gossip will be prevented if every man will remember that those who tell him the faults of others will as freely publish his faults at a favorable opportunity. In other words, the same person who brings you some reports about a brother and sister or somebody else, the same person, when you leave, will talk about you too. So don't go and take that report to bring it back and forth. Oh, it pains me to say that there are unruly tongues among church members. There are false tongues that feed on mischief. There are sly, whispering tongues. There is startling, impertinent, meddling, adroit quizzing among the lovers of gossip. Some are actuated by curiosity, others by jealousy, many by hatred against those to whom God has spoken to reprove them. There are people who talk about the preacher. The preacher speaks something in the pulpit. And they start talking back about them. That's okay, you can talk about me. I saw that the very spirit of perjury that will turn truth into falsehood, good into evil, and innocence into crime, is now active. Satan exalts over the condition of God's professed people. While many are neglecting their own soul, they eagerly watch for an opportunity to criticize and condemn others. Have mercy. Uh, this is, I want to invite you to read that book. So if you love God, You will love your brother and your sister. You will love your neighbor. Because the love of God is flowing into your heart. There is no way you will, have fight, you will fight time to criticize him. There is no way you will fight time to condemn him or condemn her. Because God is in your heart. Because you fear God. Because you are walking in his ways. Because you love him. You won't find time to receive reports and speak lies. Oh, my friends, the next requirement is to serve the Lord with all your heart. Some of us sometimes have difficulty to serve God. To say yes. When they invite us to do something, we cannot do it. I'm too busy. It's time for God's people to be willing to serve. It's time for God's people to put their priority aside and give God's first priority in their life and let God take care of their priority. Amen? 
It's time for us to stop that. Let God take control of our priorities and dedicate ourselves, our life, to his service. There are things that we cannot do. We cannot change our nature. Can we change our nature? We cannot. We are born in sins. We cannot control our thoughts. Even when we pray, we don't need, sometimes we are praying and our thoughts are going left and right all over the world. We cannot control our thoughts. We cannot control our affections. We cannot say, I'm going to choose I love this person. We can't control it. We cannot control our impulses. Can we? No. We cannot make ourselves pure. We cannot. But we can choose, my brothers and sisters, to serve God. Amen? We can choose to serve God. We can choose to give Him our will. Then God will work in us to will and to do according to His good pleasure. When we choose to serve God, God will work in us to will and to do according to his good pleasure. The Ministry of Healings, page 176. Those things we cannot do. If you have a willing heart, God is willing to use you. And good God can turn you as a potter, take, take the... Take the, 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 the the agar and turn it around and fashion it. God can make you into what he wants you to be. Because you are willing to serve. But when you are disobedient, when you don't want to do it, then there's a problem. Oh my friends, we can choose to serve God because he is the creator of the universe. We can choose to serve God not only with all our heart, but with a perfect heart. How can we do it? Let's read together. Luke chapter 2, verse 37. Luke chapter 2, verse 37. And then Acts 20, verse 19. Let's go to Luke, chapter 2, verse 37. Are you there? Amen. She was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but what? Served God with fastings and prayers night and days oh my friend this is the way to serve god with fasting and prayers night and days there is no other way my friends in this world if you want to have victory i my i'm saying if you want if the christian want to have real victory they need to spend time and prayers and fastings there is no other way than that no Christian will have victory except by serving God in prayers and fastings. But today, Christians have no time for that. And when we speak about prayers, some Christians about just the word of prayer makes some Christians tired already. If you see somebody, let's go pray. They are tired already. And don't talk about fasting. Oh, I have no time for that, my brothers and sisters. I cannot fast. You know the world, there are many people in the world who fast. Many religious groups who fast and pray. Oh, I wish today that all church members, I wish today us who are here present will spend more time in prayer and fasting. Not to pray when we want something. Not to pray when we want to buy a car. When we're looking to get married, seeking for a husband. But to pray all the time. It's time for us to pray and ask God for strength because the enemy is like a lion roaring, seeking to devour us. 
if we just pray only when we wake up in the morning or before we go to bed then we are in danger oh my friends my prayer for this morning is to serve God with all our heart but with humility and mind of mind according to Acts 20 verse 19 oh my friends with this it will be easiest for us to serve God and our neighbor and in conclusion I will say how then I can do it how can I fear God how can I walk how can I walk in his ways how can I love God with all my heart how can I serve God with all my heart with all my soul how can I do that it's by being obedient oh my friends obedience to God's requirement is paramount true obedience is born of love true obedience is inspired by love true obedience admits us into the love of God all true obedience it's inevitable if we love Christ true obedience makes possible the gift of God or we can obey except that we did it we seek him diligently and thankfully and receive the power of the Holy Spirit yes my friends we cannot be obedient if we don't receive the power of the Holy Spirit so this morning I want to invite you to fear God to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord with all your heart with all your soul my prayer for you is to serve him are you willing to that today are you willing are you willing this morning to say God I heard the requirements I heard you ask me First, I heard that I am your, I'm, I am your, I'm your son. I am the true Israelite, and you ask me, Lord, to fear you and to walk on your way. In all your ways, you ask me to love you and to keep your commitments. You ask me to serve you with all of my heart. This morning you might say, Lord, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to fear you. I don't know how to love you. I don't know how to walk in all your ways. I don't know how to serve you. But this morning, I'm willing to surrender my heart to you. And teach me how to fear you. Teach me how to walk in all your ways. Teach me how to serve you. Teach me how to love you. And teach me to keep your commitments. Are you willing to do that this morning? Please stand up. If you really say, Lord, teach me how to love you. Teach me how to serve you. Teach me how to fear your name. I will invite you to stand up. God is an awesome God, my friends. We stand here in holiness and awe of his presence. Only to the power of the Holy Spirit. Only to the power of his spirit that we can serve him. If it is your desire to serve God, if it is your desire to fear his name, if it is, desire, it is your desire to serve him, to be obedient, to love God, and to love even those who don't love you, let us pray. Oh righteous God, this morning your people stand before your presence. They say, Lord, have mercy for the sins that they have committed. Many times we have failed you, Lord, when we, sh we, we fail to prove our love to you and we fail to prove our love to our neighbor. Sometimes we take your name in vain, Lord. 
Sometimes we, we come to church, we talk so loud. We, cause, we make noise in your church, in your presence. And the angels are taking notes. Sometimes we look at others and we talk about them. We give bad report. We break their life. We kill them with their tongue. And today, Lord, teach us how to serve you faithfully. Forgive us this morning, O oh Father. Forgive us, for we have sinned greatly before you. Father, your, Father, your church is before you. Oh, touch your people once again. Sin, your, the, the Holy Spirit to give them power so they can faithfully serve you. Seek on size our heart and our heal, Lord, so we can fall in love with you again and to hear your voice. Hear our prayer this morning. Touch those who have stayed this morning. They have all kinds of difficulties today. Some of us came from far away. Some are visiting this church for the first time. You know their problems? You know their situations. You know their pains, oh Lord. Touch them in a special way. Touch their family. Father, we need you. For the end is here. We don't know when you're going to call us, Father. Therefore, this morning, we surrender ourselves to you. So when you call us, when death comes on our way, we will be ready. So when you come again, we will be with you forever. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Father, for your patience toward us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.